What it do, Dream Team? Here we are back with another reaction video, and we are back with Thomas Soul. I believe listening to him has completely shifted my perspective about Brit the Great Britain and the British Empire. Uh, but here we are with the colonization of Britain, the most brutal in history. So usually we we hear a lot about Britain colonizing because I mean they conquered like what was it ninety percent of the world or something like that. But here we got a we got a, a video about Britain being colonized uh, by the Romans. So let's go ahead and jump in. Make sure you guys subscribe, ring notification bell, get a video, a thumbs up. Let's learn something. During Caesar's raiding expedition in 55 BC, his fleet met disastrous weather in unfamiliar waters off the British coast, and his cavalry was unable to get ashore. Nevertheless, the discipline and armor of the Romans prevailed, and the expedition returned in triumph to Rome with captured British slaves marching behind them in the procession. Dang. Disunity among the British tribes continued to the Roman victory. A century later, under the Emperor Claudius, the Romans returned as full-scale invaders. Claudius subdued a large part of the island and was back in Rome in six months. Jesus. Yet the battle for the remainder of Britain continued on for decades. The British tribes took up arms with savage fierceness, in Gibbon's words, but they also laid them down or turned them against mm. each other with oh. wild inconstancy. The Romans, by contrast, proceeded methodically with a divide-and-conquer strategy politically and sustained and disciplined military operations. Mm. It was a difference that would distinguish the conquerors from the conquered in many parts of the world for many centuries to come. So, Britain, so the Romans were organized, you feel me? They were all on the same page. They were divide, conquer, let's win this while Britain, they took up arms fiercely, they fought hard, but they were disorganized. It seemed like they didn't have a clear-cut strategy in how they were going to attack which led to the dis disorganization, led to chaos, which led to them even turning on each other, which in turn helped Roman, or helped the Romans. Among the other common characteristics of conquerors that marked the Roman subjugation of Britain were arrogance, greed, and brutality. Oh. In southeastern Britain, for example, the king of the Iceni died in 59 AD, leaving half of his estate to the Roman emperor, in hopes that this gesture would enable his heirs to enjoy the remainder in peace and mm. the realm to remain undisturbed. But the Roman authorities in Britain confiscated the entire estate, God flogged dang. the widowed queen, Boudicca, for resisting, and raped her daughters. The oppressions and atrocities of the Romans provoked a massive... Jesus, he was willing to give up half. Half of his estate, half of everything he owned and the wealth that he accumulated. And the Romans said, F that, we're going to take it all. And since your widow resisted, we're going to flog her and rape the daughters. My God. The revolt of the Iceni, led by Boudicca, and joined by other tribes with grievances against their Roman overlords. The rebellious Britons rampaged through the southern part of the island, spreading death and destruction to Romans, Roman sympathizers, and Roman oh, structures Jesus. and symbols. Eventually, however, enough Roman military units were assembled to confront the Britons, who nevertheless had great numerical superiority. After seesaw battles in which neither side showed mercy or took prisoners, once again the superior discipline, organization, mm. and armaments of the Romans prevailed. They then slaughtered the old as well as the young, men, women, Jesus. children, and animals throwing human and animal bodies on a common pile of corpses. The Roman authorities in Britain who provoked the Boudican revolt were replaced by men who could maintain Rome's rule without such ruinous costs. My, they're absolutely ruthless. So after the Britons fought back, of course, as the oppressed tend to do, they tend to fight back. Uh, they were fighting fiercely. The Romans then gathered enough forces to face them, and again, they won. And after they won, they killed everybody, it seemed like. Men, children, women, animals. They killed everybody. My God! Were replaced by men who could maintain Rome's rule without such ruinous costs. 
In the centuries that followed, the Romans conquered Britain culturally as well as militarily. Mm. Well-to-do Britons began to wear the Roman toga, speak Latin, and have arcades, baths, and sumptuous banquets. However, this Romanization spread unevenly down the social scale, with most Britons continuing to speak in a Celtic tongue, for example. As with other conquered peoples, it was the higher classes among the Britons who had the greatest tendency to adopt the language and culture of the conquerors, thereby acquiring some of the prestige of the dominant culture and such opportunities as existed to achieve favored positions within the new order. To the poorer masses below, working primarily in agriculture, such considerations had little weight, certainly not enough for them to take on the burden of learning a new language and a whole new way of life, though various okay. products and practices of Roman civilization might be accepted. In short, conquest created language differences and accentuated cultural differences among the conquered people. It was a pattern that would recur in later centuries, after later conquests, both within the British Isles and in other societies around the world. Under the Romans, towns developed, roads were built, and trade flourished. The more efficient Roman plow was used for farming, pottery and metalwork were imported, and new building methods were used and taught. Window panes were introduced by the Romans, so oh, were wow. such mundane things as latrines. Architecture made its first real appearance, as the Britons, used to huts, now for the first time saw buildings. Sculpture and representational art in general were also introduced into a country where art before had meant Celtic designs. So I guess almost every nation that has been colonized, right? I'm, I mean, you, even though, of course, the people had to go through atrocities, of course, the people absolutely hated it because of what they had to go through and they revolted against the people. In the end, the, 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 the colonized nations ended up learning a lot from the colonizers. As it seems like Rome introduced so many things to Britain and I'm sure that the British Empire definitely learned a fair a fair amount from Rome and how to do a lot of things. And so they gained, even though the people, like I said, went through atrocities, uh, and I would never want people to go through things like that, the nation as a whole in the long run, they actually progressed because of it. So it's it's crazy. And so I like that like we say a lot of time when we talk about the British Empire and Great Britain we think of them as colonizing so much of the world but here they were colonized and they learned so much from the Romans. Roman capital helped develop the British economy. Like other less developed regions, Britain was an exporter of raw materials. The period from 96 AD to 180 has often been regarded as the golden age of the Roman Empire. It was the era of the Pax Romana, the peace secured by the overwhelming superiority of Roman military power over any possible challenger, and by an awareness in Rome that little remained to be conquered that would be worth the cost of conquest. Hmm. Symptomatic of this era was a wall built to the north of Roman Britain to secure it against marauders from the unconquered northern region of the island, present-day oh. Scotland. Roman Britain thrived during this era of peace, when Rome was invincible and its culture spread among the Britons. The enduring Roman contributions to the country included the building of a major port on the Thames. In Winston Churchill's words, we owe London to Rome. We owe the importance London of the Roman cultural contribution to the development of Britain was demonstrated not only by the progress that took place while they were there, but also by the retrogression that took place after they left. Both covered sweeping areas of British life. The Roman legions withdrew from the British Isles early in the 5th century AD to meet growing military threats to the declining empire on the continent. By the beginning of the 6th century, British towns were crumbling, with buildings oh, wow. and statues in ruins, and the forests were beginning to reclaim some human settlements. Increasingly, Britain was raided and then invaded by fierce continental tribes, notably the Angles and the Saxons, two Jesus. Germanic peoples from what is now southern Denmark and the northwest coastal plains of Germany. These were illiterate pre-Christian tribes who helped oh, wow. contribute to the destruction of much of Roman civilization in Britain 
as well as eventually changing the racial composition of the British people. Huh. That was absolutely insane. But again, I guess we, we see here how Britain being colonized, while absolutely terrible for the people who were colonized in the long run for the nation, it actually helped them progress. And they learned a lot from, from the Romans. So... Uh, again, we we learn here that colonizing is terrible, or it seems terrible at the time, especially to the people being colonized, but a lot of these nations end up prospering in the future because of it. That's all we have. Make sure you guys subscribe, ring notification bell, and if you enjoyed that reaction video, make sure you take the time to check out that one. Just, just go ahead and binge watch them all. It's your boy, d -Neil. Out.